Okay, so um, here we are back at our wave packet um, simulation. And I just wanted to point out another couple things here. One is that what I've shown you so far, when I'm, when I'm showing you the sort of um, wave packet, is just the real part of the wave function. So we haven't talked about it much yet, but we um, each sort of wave has a real and imaginary part, okay? And in fact, what we usually like to do is use the complex um, notation for sinusoidal varying functions, that is e to the i phi, which is cosine phi plus i sine phi. And so, um, and it turns out that it's important in quantum mechanics to keep track of both of them. And what's important is that if we look at the imaginary part, it looks the same basically, but it's just got a pi over 2 phase shift, a quarter wave phase shift, okay? And, but what that means is that, so here's the imaginary part, and here's the real part. Let me um, spread the wave out a little bit so it's a little bit more obvious, okay? You can see the difference between the imaginary part and the real part. And they evolve in principle the same way. There's just, again, a phase shift. But the key is that when you actually want to uh, find the... Pro These are amplitudes, okay? So when you want to find the probability of the, of the particle or, or the wave packet, um, then you actually have to square this. But since it's a complex number, you have to take... Um, you have to square it in, in, the, in the complex way. And, and when you do that, you get the probability distribution which looks like this and that's because these again the real part and the imaginary part are 90 degrees out of phase and so when you um, when you uh, take their absolute value when you take the absolute value or when you take the amplitude you square it then you get um, you get something which looks uh, you know the probability can't be less than one so it's a, a probability distribution that looks like this and now if we run time we see that the wave packet moves to the to the right, and what we also see is that it starts to. It's a little bit hard to tell, but you're it's starting to get wider, and it's starting to run off the page, and it also starting to reduce the peak amplitude. Okay, it starts off at 0 0.8, 0 0.08, and you can see that it's actually going getting smaller as you move as you run time, and that's called dispersion. That has to do with the fact that these um, these waves are, um, again, slightly different frequencies. And so when you run time, their relative phases start to um, shift with respect to each other. And eventually, um, it will flatten out. And then it will come back together. And the particle will, will sort of um, uh, come back. But what we see right here is just as, as it's dispersing, we see that it's as, it's, as time is going on, we see that it's spreading out and getting and and the peak and the peak probability is getting is getting reduced. If we um, increase the average momentum, okay, that means that we because the uncertainty principle we decrease the uncertainty in the position, and that's why it gets narrow. Okay, so relationship between the uh, the the, ampli the uh, uncertainty in the momentum, or the average momentum, and the uncertainty in the um, position is obvious there. So now we have a, a narrower um, wave packet. And again, if we uh, run time, we see that it's getting a little bit wider, a little bit broader, and the peak, uh, the peak probability is, is uh, going down.